From the early days of aviation to the present day flying luxury hotels, the limits of flight engineering have been tested countless times, not always successfully. Come along while we take a look at five daring feats that help push forward the limits of flight as we know it. Our first stop is the Christmas bullet, also called the cantilever aero bullet and sometimes referred to as the Christmas strutless biplane. In the early 20th century, a man who identified himself as an aviation connoisseur, Dr. William Christmas, was the creative force behind this aircraft. It boasted of wings that were versatile, a feature that challenged the mainstream belief in the necessity of stiff wing structures. But in the year 1919, the inaugural flight of the bullet culminated in an unfortunate catastrophe. Both of the prototypes met with a crash, tragically claiming the lives of the test pilots on board. The unfortunate event that marked the failure of the Christmas bullet underlined the indisputable significance of meticulous engineering and thorough testing within the field of aviation. Next, we have the Spruce Goose, technical named the Hughes H4 Herculeson, an enormous flying boat built by the visionary Howard Hughes in the 1940s. This floating titan symbolizes a dream of limitless ambitions and engineering prowess. Imagine a colossal aircraft pushing aviation's boundaries. Commanding attention, its sheer size dwarfs even the most imposing contemporary aircraft. Yet despite its grandeur, the Spruce Goose only accomplished a single fleeting flight in the late autumn of 1947. This brief moment of airborne glory forms a stark contrast to its otherwise grounded existence. The Spruce Goose's failure to meet its lofty ambitions underscores the intricate balance between design, functionality and practicality in aviation. Today, this gargantuan aircraft resides at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum. A Douglas DC-3 is parked under its wing, which shows the scale of the H-4. We then turn to the Bell X-2, nicknamed Starbuster. This aircraft, a product of relentless research engineering, was designed with a single goal in mind, to investigate flight characteristics at extraordinary speeds within the Mach 2 3 range. Unfortunately, this ambitious endeavor cost test pilots and crew members their lives. In a calamitous end, in the fall of September 1956, a tragic event shook the aviation world. An X-2 reached Mach 3.2 but spun out of control, resulting in the untimely death of test pilot Milburn G. Apt. His demise was a harsh awakening to the aviation community about the extreme dangers involved in pushing boundaries, and the project was scrapped. The Starbuster's downfall is a poignant reminder of the inherent risks involved in exploring the unknown and the extreme demands placed on those brave enough to do so. The fourth in our series, the de Havilland Comet, claimed the title as the world's first commercial jet airliner. The Comet, during its time, was a marvel of engineering and design, a testament to the ambition of humankind. However, its journey was not always smooth or successful. In the early 1950s, the comet met with a series of catastrophic crashes. Investigations revealed that these disasters were caused by an often overlooked problem, metal fatigue. As a result, the failure of the comet pushed the industry to revolutionize safety standards. This monumental event spearheaded the development of contemporary fatigue testing and inspection techniques. The comet's initial failure, thus, gave birth to a new era of aviation safety. The comet was extensively redesigned with structural reinforcements and other changes. Rival manufacturers heeded the lessons learned from the Comet when developing their own aircraft. The Comet story doesn't end there. The improved Comet 2 and the prototype Comet 3 culminated in the redesigned Comet 4 series which debuted in 1958 and remained in commercial service until 1981. The Comet was also adapted for a variety of military roles such as VIP, medical and passenger transport, and surveillance. The last Comet 4, used as a research platform, made its final flight in 1997. A maritime patrol derivative, the Hawker Siddeley Nimrod, remained in service with the Royal Air Force until 2011, over 60 years after the Comet's first flight. Finally, we visit the famous Concorde, the supersonic passenger airliner that promised to revolutionize air travel. This marvel of engineering was designed to go beyond the constraints of standard flight, pushing the boundaries of what was technologically possible. It was a symbol of progress, a testament to human ingenuity and ambition. Yet its journey was not without turbulence. 
pun definitely intended. The Concorde cut air travel times in half, but was limited to oceanic flights due to sonic booms. High operational costs and limited profitability became major roadblocks in its path to success. The most significant setback, however, was a devastating crash in the year 2000, a tragedy that deeply shook the faith in this machine. It was a blow from which the Concorde could never fully recover. In 2003, the Concorde was retired, marking the end of an era and the end of commercial supersonic travel, at least for the time being. All but two of the 20 Concords were preserved intact, on display around the world. These failures, as heartbreaking and costly as they were, serve as crucial learning experiences in the field of aviation. In the face of adversity, the human spirit refuses to be deterred. Each failure is seen not as a roadblock, but as a guide pointing us towards the path of knowledge and progress. Every mistake, every mishap, is a puzzle piece fitting into the broader picture of scientific advancement. These trials teach us not to fear the fall, but to use it as an opportunity for growth. In the realm of experimental aviation, each setback is a lesson, a catalyst inspiring us to push beyond our boundaries. Every disaster is not an end, but a stepping stone propelling us forward. It is through these failures that we learn, grow, and ultimately soar to new heights.